drama is not something we impose, and I think this is a really important concept. We think of drama outside of ourselves. Our lives are dramatic. Flying, it, it's really hard to see, but it wasn't intended to be a film about me. <laughs> Now you may find that hard to believe at this point because obviously I'm the big protagonist in flying and if you see six <coughs> episodes, you see, you know, Jennifer Fox times too much. But the idea originally in the 90s, I started shooting this in 2002, was to make a film about the way women speak. And I couldn't figure out how to tell that film, particularly because the way women speak only happens when there's incredibly private moments, secret moments, no men around, and certainly not a camera. So originally though, you know, I did what every filmmaker would do, which is I said, okay, I'm gonna pick three subjects, follow them over time, and then maybe cross-cut their stories. That's, you guys know that that's sort of the classic documentary. If you don't know what to do, pick three, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know we do that in America anyway. We do that here too. Okay. But I kept trying to figure it out and it kind of played in my mind for a really long time. And this idea of three didn't work and then the bigger problem was where the camera goes. Because I knew once you put a camera in a third position, the scene would collapse. So the very thing that I was trying to film, which is intimacy, was going to be killed by the camera. So then we have another problem. And again, my work, if you see it, each piece is radically different. You wouldn't necessarily think it was the same filmmaker. It's really linked by trying to figure out form relating to the story. So in this case, I had to figure out the camera became a central piece of the puzzle of how to tell a film about the way women speak. And I'd say, okay, let's just talk. Here, you take it and film me. And it went like that. And the, you know, the flip screen, which I hate flip screens. You know, classically, I come from film because of my age. I cut on the viola when I grew up. You know, Flip screens are like low-end filmmaking. You never use a flip screen. You look through the viewfinder, but the flip screen meant that we could, and it developed, of course, you have to be in passing distance. So the shots are very tight. You, oh, food was a big concept in this also because we always talk women around food or drinking, right? Or tea or coffee, or you have a meal or you have a glass of wine. So you're always at a table and you're always in this arm distance so you can pass. And then we would just sit, you know, and pass like that. And of course in the beginning I didn't have this little mic on the back. It was a little more brutal. But quite honestly, at this distance, the equipment can do very well. And the sound is quite good because you're always in this distance. So then the other thing I was like, okay. So would you would you talk with me and then while you were talking, switch the camera over like this or? No, I also, I wasn't dogmatic. <coughs> You're not passing on the word. That's why this little back mic is kind of important. Um, luckily, actually, very beginning of making this film, I started a day, Patrick Lindenmeyer, <laughs> and he's a tech guy and he said, oh, just do this. So he set that up very early in the, it was, we called it research shooting. The first images in the film when you see Patrick come into the loft, that was all play. It was like, that was before there was one broadcaster on board, there was no money. We were just going, okay, let's just play with this. And, and I didn't want it to be dogmatic, like pass on the word, but so if you have a mic in both places, it doesn't matter, and that's where you get the reaction shots that we intercut to make it seem like there's a cross cut. But again, that was already not very formed. The other thing that I started to experiment is, okay, how do I film myself? I don't know if you ever call it casting, but again, documentary doesn't have very good language for our, for our work. 
But in fiction, we say, okay, a cast a character. So we're constantly casting in documentary. So when you cast, you look for a person in crisis. Because a person in crisis makes a good character. Why? Because there's a lot of drama, either internal or external. And the reason I cast myself in flying to make the film was because I really was in a real crisis. And the other piece that brings presence, a person, I had a real need to make this film. Mm. That means I'm not thinking, do I look good today? Do I sound good today? I've got something I have to get out of it. That makes me more present. And it also makes me see the bigger picture, which is not, and also there was a lot, ha if you looked at my life today, I'm monogamous in a relationship I've been in for a very long time. It's a really boring life compared to that period. You know, it, it's true. The other day, a girlfriend of mine said, can you shoot this conversation for me for a film she's making? And so I was filming them and I was allowed to be back now, even just filming them, in order to be a good camera person, all my ideas have to, I have to leave behind the fight I had with my boyfriend or my lover or my child or whatever. I have to leave behind what I ate for breakfast and what I'm going to be tomorrow. Because if I'm going to get the shot, I have to be here. 